Good afternoon, everyone. Digging into the story here, rare March snow, blizzards, Turkey, Cyprus, Algeria, Taiwan, India. U.S. had the coldest February in more than 30 years. Iceland temperatures down, down, down in three different stations. When food production is affected and the narrative can no longer be sustained, enter the catalyst for the global financial reset. Block off the Suez Canal. Slow down the oil. Needs to go all the way around Africa. At least that'll be the excuse for your rising food prices when all along it was volcanic activity, electromagnetism, and a step down from our sun. Are you ready for April? The Biden administration and Democrats in Congress are wasting no time in their efforts to reset the direction of America's future. The Wall Street Journal estimates that of the $1.7 trillion stimulus bill, only $825 billion was directly related to COVID. And it's estimated that 2021 will include another $3 trillion in stimulus money printing, bringing the total to $6.3 trillion in 2020 and 2021 alone. And that's why you'll instantly understand when Wells Fargo and Goldman Sachs both say it's the time to buy gold. It's time to heed that advice. Patriot Gold Group has the no-fee-for-life IRA where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver. And you may be eligible for the no-fee-for-life IRA. So go ahead and give the folks at Patriot Gold Group a call to discuss physical gold and silver. And the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is consumer affairs Top rated gold IRA dealer five years in a row from 2016 till present. Click the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. And this headline here from Electroverse coming across my newswire. UK on for record April snow. Rare March blizzards blanketing Turkey, Cyprus, Algeria, Taiwan, and India. And I thought that's a bit strange. Those are warmer places, especially going into the spring. You'd think it'd be well into the 60s and 70s Fahrenheit by now. Cyprus, parts of Taiwan, etc. So here we are. Let's take a trip across the world for what was supposed to be a thing of the past. Taiwan, tallest peak, Yushan. Rare March snow, even quoted by their own Central Weather Bureau. We've seen this word rare used quite a bit in this last couple of months, and it just continues. That's not a dusting either. That's a couple inches up on the mountains. Algeria, Arctic air sneaking down there. Rare snows inside the rare Atlantic cedar trees. That's a double rare in there. Check. Turkey, battered by heavy snowfalls in Istanbul. And even in the article, they say that meteorologists had forecast some snow, but it caught everybody off guard on how much actually fell. And see, this is a, a recurring theme here. Expecting a couple inches and then a foot or two come down, catching people off guard, saying with cold events, supposed to be colder than normal a little bit, and then whoosh, record-breaking cold, straining grids. We saw what happened in Texas. That was one of those type of events. Cyprus, not expecting snow coming into April in Cyprus. Following a brief summer spell, Cypriots, who also have already experienced a reset in the economy, could probably tell you a couple things about what's coming up next month. Plunging below the national average and then snow falling throughout the day. Chalk another one up into the rare category there. India, unexpected blizzards trapping thrilled tourists in the Solong Valley. That's up near Manali. Any of you ever traveled up to northern India there, Manali, the step-off point to points further? My favorite was the Parbati Valley. Hung out there for a little while. But heavy snow blanketing roads in and out of Lahal and Manali. Over a foot of snow. It does snow in the Himalaya every year, yes, obviously. But getting blizzards, trapping people unexpected this late in the season? Well, a little check the box again. Rare. And if I bring you back to double snow on double islands in Hawaii earlier in this month, March 1st through the 3rd, and remember it's the third year in a row that they've been setting not only record snow totals of the depths, but the altitude at which it is accumulating. 
If any of you have been following for some time, I did a video last year where the altitude was a new record low in altitude on Maui set for Haleakala snowfall, descending below 5,000 feet, which was incredibly rare. Now, snow is one thing around the planet, but now let's just talk about temperature in earnest here because the U.S. surface temperatures dropped to the lowest in over 30 years in February. This comes off what's up with that. So I linked everything below in the description box. You can jump in and find all these graphs yourself. But that is a steep drop-off in temperatures. And the way that it's referenced by NOAA itself is one of the steepest drops in temperature ever recorded. So NOAA also putting out these maps that go along with the same record-breaking deep freeze engulfing not only Texas, but taking the entire United States into a 30-year low in temperatures in February for the average across the lower 48 there. And you know me, I'm a fan of trying to find the cycles. So when I had this map, this is the golden egg right here. Mean temperature drops from average. And I thought maybe I could match that up with the old monitor minimum reconstruction maps here that they had done using 10,000 different locations and multiple proxies to figure out what the temperatures were, how much it dropped, and which latitudes across all these multiple continents, and bingo! That matches exactly right across North America where those same drops are. And you notice over in Europe, Germany and these same areas are experiencing, and you know what, look at Morocco, that dark blue right there, North Africa with all the exceptional snows and cold. It's a little unbelievable to be coincidental that three areas on this Monitor minimum reconstruction map continually for at least three years in a row are mapping up exactly with where the anomalous cold and anomalous snow events are across our planet. And to add another little bit of fact into this, three stations in Iceland mean annual temperatures 2001 to 20. Now, this is the last 20 years of data. I see them stepping down in temperature. I don't know what you see, but I see a sloping downward trend there on all three but I'm sure with the volcanoes in certain areas those will be chosen for the heat increases for the year yay because volcanoes you know the heat stuff and over to the Finnish Meteorological Institute like their snow maps for the northern hemisphere this red line was supposed to be a thing of the past yet it continues well above the averages from 1982 to 2012 Go figure. People are starting to ask a lot of questions. Too much cold, too much snow, what's happening? Our lives have been turned upside down, economies being bashed into smithereens, and a lot of people are waking up saying no more, it stops. Now, enter the Trump card on top of last year's Trump card to stop all global protests about central banks. Here we go, it's in play again. I truly believe this is the catalyst here for the global collapse of our economy inbound right here to explain away everything. This will explain away non-delivery of food, huge exponential food price increases, which will then explain why there will need to be more controls for you to access supermarkets to get food. It couldn't dare be any kind of natural decline in yields due to the sun stepping down in a 400-year cycle that's known as a catalyst for a reset button in society. Every 400 years, we're back at it again. I have a lot of questions how this thing got lodged sideways. The wind story just doesn't do it for me. This is the largest class of cargo container vessel on the planet. I think there's 18,000 loaded containers on this vessel at the moment. And even though the size is so large, they can thread this thing through a needle with all the newest state-of-the-art thrust and propulsion below water within the hull itself to get this thing to move a quarter of an inch in any direction to get it to dock. And then somehow the wind pushes this thing and they had no way to fight against the wind, yet every other ship transiting that had no problems for the day. But what it has done is stop the flow of oil. All the super tankers are stuck. They're going to have to go around southern Africa. Adding another 10 to 12 days, probably more because it's not just an established route. Things are going to have to be re reworked and retweaked for a little while. So there are already about 35 to 40 million barrels stranded that were outbound going through the Suez Canal. 
This, in my opinion, is a perfect excuse to collapse the global economy, reset it, put in the crypto, central bank digital currencies. My sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth senses are saying this is something amiss. Danger Will Robinson, and it's coming quick. As a one catch-all to explain all the deficiencies and all the breakdowns and all the woes and all the inability to get food into your mouth, into your supermarket. Which is why you're going to want to think about some long-term storable foods. Adapt 2030 and My Patriot Supply, two-week or the four-week emergency food supply. They also have one-month, six-month, one-year packages. But at the same time, if you've already bought a lot of storable foods, you, know, you have a 25-pound bag of rice laying around somewhere and you wanted to put it into your own Mylar packs and store that for a longer period of time. My Patriot Supply also has the Mylar bags, the oxygen packs, and everything you need to self-pack some of your own storable foods along with water filtration, which will be another thing. As we saw, when water disappears, there's giant problems. I wish you the best in your preparations. Thank you for letting me bring you this information. And I can do that because of support when you buy something from my Patriot Supply. Plus, we're all in this together. I'm just sharing what I see on my little part of the riverboat here. Moving upstream in the river of chaos. And all the links from tonight's video are in the description box below along with my Patriot Supply. I highly encourage you to check out the Suez Canal crisis. The title in that off of Zero Hedge was Suez Canal Crisis Morphs into Global Supply Chain Wrecking Ball. That's where it's going. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.